Welcome everyone. My name is Michelle bokoff Bidak or Michelle BB. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Skillsoft and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. You know, since early 2020, COVID-19 has affected every single one of us all around the globe, but its most profound effect arguably has been on the world's women, from health concerns and caregiving to economic insecurity and the daily challenge to juggle professional and personal lives. Thank you so much for joining me today as I share the stories of the many shades of pink, the pandemic's myriad effects on Women Plus. And to start, I wanna share a story about a woman named Naomi, a tenured professor at a major university. After winning the prestigious Fulbright competition in 2019, Naomi was thrilled to be teaching a global course on diversity, social justice, and inclusion at Winsheim Honors College. Now, Naomi had chosen the Netherlands because her research looks at compassion as a key component and learning outcome of tolerance and diversity. Her Fulbright was to be the culmination of four years of collaboration with both the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam and the honors community in the Netherlands. Now, like the rest of us, she did not nor could not anticipate the impact of a global pandemic. Naomi was forced to fly home months early and updated her now digital curriculum to explore the relationship between the pandemic and the diversity and justice issues that were her course's central focus. As Naomi reminded me in the early weeks of the pandemic, Anne Frank's name was repeatedly invoked, whether as a social media meme about sheltering in place or as a stern warning never to forget the unique horrors of the Holocaust. Now, 75 years after Anne's death, Naomi wondered if we were diminishing her suffering as people found a place of connection with it. And ultimately, she concluded that the strong sense of connection people felt offers entry to larger issues, a powerful reminder that stereotypes are neither neutral nor flattering, but rather a dangerous form of othering. In these times, Anne's story becomes an inspiration to ask not, what would I have done, but rather, what will I do? You know, it's a question that many women have had to ask themselves, and it's why I am so excited to be here today. At Skillsoft, we believe that every person has the potential to be amazing. Our purpose is to unleash human potential through learning, and our vision is to prepare the workforce of today with the skills for tomorrow. And for the next 30, 35 minutes or so, I want to share stories, stories of women and all who identify as women who have faced the pandemic with grit, resilience, and determination, because it hasn't been easy, but it is important to tell their stories. Let me start by going back a couple of years. In 2019, women had gained slow but hard-fought ground in the workplace across much of the globe. In the United States in December 2019, shortly before the pandemic, women held slightly more jobs than men for the first time in 10 years. In Europe, the employment rate for women had risen, albeit slowly, to 64% from 58% 10 years earlier. In Australia, the participation of women in the paid workforce had increased more significantly from 40% 30 years ago to a high of 60%. And across all of Asia Pacific, 89% of DEI programs focused on empowering women to take on more senior level positions. Then, in the late first quarter of 2020, when the pandemic was recognized as a global crisis, economic uncertainties forced many organizations to downsize, lay off, or furlough employees. Women were affected at greater numbers than men, whether they lost their jobs, chose to exit voluntarily, or took extended leaves of absence. The pandemic created a crisis for women around the world. According to McKinsey, women's jobs globally were nearly two times more vulnerable to the pandemic than men's. In Japan, almost 800,000 jobs were lost in the first seven months of COVID, mainly in the female-dominated sectors of retail and hospitality. And in Europe, those same sectors, retail, hospitality, and tourism and aviation were most affected by COVID-related restrictions, and Europe's women accounted for 61% of workers in those industries. Since there are more women in those sectors to begin with, women lost jobs 
four times more often than their male counterparts. And in Australia, three in five job losses across the nation in 2020 impacted women. And the latest World Economic Gender Gap report showed that Australia had dropped to 50th in the world in its measure of gender equity, down from 15th in 2006. When Gwen, who lives near Melbourne, Australia, lost her job in early 2020, she became one of the many women thrust into economic insecurity by the pandemic, and it disrupted her life in myriad ways. In the following 12 months and during lockdowns, she left a long-term relationship, moved in with a family member, and found some contract work. But she was unable to find the employment she sought, and she missed out on so many opportunities, some because she was overly qualified. And Gwen was willing to do anything and applied everywhere, including her local supermarket. She lost her usual confidence as her prospects dimmed. Fortunately, she learned about an organization fitted for work that could offer assistance and support. And Gwen reached out to them for help, acknowledging that this was difficult because she'd never allowed anyone to see her as a victim. The organization supported her in so many ways, professional feedback on her CV and LinkedIn pages, new clothes for interviews, monthly check-ins, and online workshops and learning opportunities with other women in her situation. And she was fully determined to take advantage of all of the opportunities that Fitted for Work gave her. I'll talk more about them in a bit. We saw staggering trends here in the United States as well. According to the National Women's Law Center, between February 2020 and February 2021, more than 2.3 million women completely dropped out of the labor force, meaning they were not working or looking for work. 863,000 women left the workforce in September 2020 alone. And last year, only 57% of U.S. women were working, the lowest number since 1988. And women who still had their jobs cut back on their hours at a rate of five to one over men. For so many women, the pandemic meant making tough choices. You know, one of the very first things that Nancy said to me when we spoke is that she knows that she's speaking from a place of privilege. She was a chief marketing officer at an aerospace manufacturing company, and unlike many women, she could work from home when the pandemic hit. And so she did so with that grit and determination that I talked about before. It was one of the things she prided herself on. But soon, Nancy started to feel the effects of 14-hour days working from a makeshift office in her basement. And because the company had contracts with NASA and various intelligence agencies, manufacturing had to continue with about 25% of its workforce on site. And the sheer volume of communications that she personally was managing was staggering. But as we all know, the business and personal complications of COVID kept coming in wave after wave. When Nancy realized that her teenage son was struggling, it was the last straw. Although she was the breadwinner for the family, she felt compelled to take a step back. She resigned from her executive level position and eventually found a fulfilling job at a lower level that will enable her to balance work and family far more easily. 